Hello everyone. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we are doing another Travel China live live stream. So if you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Um, basically the concept behind this live stream series is none of us can really travel right now, myself included. So using the wonders of the internet, we are going to go travel China virtually together. Um, so grab some snacks, get comfy and get ready for a free tour of Nanjing, which is where we are going to be traveling virtually to today. Um, so Yes, Nanjing, that is where we are going to be going. Um, I have been there once before, um, so I, my memories are still a bit hazy of Nanjing, so I'm really happy we get to go again today. It's um, one of the four ancient capitals of China. It's a place with a very, very, very long history. It's been the capital of China many times. We'll get more into that a bit, little, little bit later. And it's often called the southern capital because the name Nanjing literally translates to southern capital. Nan is south, um, Jing is capital, in contrast to Beijing, which is no northern capital. Um, Bei means north, Jing means capital. Anyway, ipso facto, there we go. A bit of fun fact from you for you today. Um, but let's get open a map here for a bit of a bit more geographical clarification of where we are today. Um, so here is a map of Nanjing. So here we are, Nanjing's here. Um, in contrast to Beijing, the, the northern capital here, which is further north. And um, it's in Jiangsu province, as you can see here, it's, uh, which is a province right on the coast. Um, you've got Nanjing here, um, Suzhou, another very famous and beautiful city uh, here. And it's very close to Shanghai, which is not in Jiangsu province, but it's very close by and also very close to Hangzhou, another very famous um, city, which is um, a little bit over here, I think. Um, and you can see it's got the Yangtze River running through Nanjing. Um, which is one of the reasons why it's a really important city in China. There are a lot of very important cities along the Yangtze River. And um, yeah, so that is uh, that is where we are going to be going today. Very, very excited. Um, so uh, first, before we get into the meaty bit of the live stream, uh, just I wanted to do a little bit of admin. Um, first, a huge thank you, as always, to the When Koala Meets Panda YouTube channel. Um, they have helped connect me with the three guides, the three um, uh, people who are going to be taking us around Nanjing today. So thank you so much to them. Um, you can follow their YouTube channel at the link below if you're interested. Um, secondly, there are going to be a couple of moderators for my live stream live chat today um, because I learned my lesson a couple of live streams ago. If I don't have moderators, it can get a little bit um, not fun for the other people in the live stream that are trying to watch and it can get a bit hateful and political and um, just a bit mean in there. So just be aware if you are planning to write any mean, hateful comments in the live chat, your comments will be deleted um, just to keep it a nice, happy, happy atmosphere here. This is a place of love, a loving community. So let's not spread hate, let's spread love today. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, yeah, that's it for admin. So without further ado, I want to show you guys the itinerary for our live stream today where we are actually going to be going in Nanjing. So um, I have prepared this little uh, PowerPoint. First up, uh, we are going to the Confucius Temple in Nanjing, very famous place. Um, then we will be visiting Niu Shoshan, which is Nanjing's newest uh, tourist destination. It's super beautiful. Can't wait to take you guys there. Um, then we're going to the Nanjing City Wall for a little bit of a walk. Um, and then we are going to back into Niu Shoshan, uh, where we are going to be going to this absolutely amazing underground temple um, that you have to see to believe. It's really quite incredible. And then we are going to be trying one of Nanjing's most famous foods, of course, the Nanjing salted duck, uh, Yan Shui Ya. So that's um, some of what you can look forward to on the stream today. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to getting into it. But um, I wanted to show you guys a photo of me from six years ago. Hello, um, this is me in Nanjing. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times. I used to study in Shanghai. It was the first place I ever lived or went to in China. And one of my first trips out of Shanghai uh, was Nanjing along with Hangzhou. And as I showed you before on the map, they're very close geographically, those cities. So it's very easy to get to. So I went there for um, a couple of days, only a couple of days, and just saw just the main sites of the city, a very overview, 
like just a very basic kind of tour of Nanjing. This is a photo of me on top of um, the Purple Mountain, which uh, ironically enough is not very purple at all. And um, this is a photo that I took from Purple Mountain. Uh, one of my favorite photos of a sunset I've ever taken in China, I think. And, you know, uh, pollution, it's not so fun, not so great. But one good thing about pollution is it does make a quite a dramatic, um, <laughs> quite dramatic uh, sunset photos. Um, and then this is also me from uh, Sun Yat-sen Memorial, one of the very famous things to do in Nanjing. We're not actually going to go there today on our live stream. So I thought, um, we, let's just I'll just show you some photos here of that site. Um, this wasn't a particularly busy day to go. Um, I was there like midweek, random time of day. It wasn't a holiday, but you can see it's just always full of people. And um, you've got, got a lady taking a photo of me here and you've got a lot of um, a lot of green a lot, what are they called? Trees. Oh, yes. We have a lot of trees in Nanjing. Um, one of the biggest impressions I got from Nanjing is it's very green, a lot of trees, public parks, um, places to go hike. Um, so I really like that about the city. And I'm, I'm very excited to be able to go back a second time, hopefully soon when I get the chance to go back to China. Um, for anyone who is wondering, I am not in China right now. I am in Sydney. I'm at my desk and we are traveling to China virtually. Um, and yeah, so this is the last photo that... Why aren't you going? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Beautiful photo of me. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a very, very bad quality photos here. So I thought that instead of um, showing you guys all these D-grade photos that I took like six years ago from Nanjing, I would bring in a professional to show you the beauty of this city because it is really a very beautiful city. So I actually got in touch with one of my favorite photographers in China. Um, he uh, lives in the Nanjing area, Hangzhou, Nanjing. He has a lot of amazing photos from that area. And um, his name is Andy. I've actually put the a uh, link to his Instagram channel just below in the description so you can go follow him. But um, he's shared with me some of the best photos that he's taken in Nanjing and they are so spectacular. They are so fabulous and I'm really excited to share them with you guys. Um, I am going to put on a little bit of a slideshow of his photos. It goes for about um, a minute, a minute and a half. I'm going to put some background music on there so it's going to be nice and chill. So without further ado, let me get my background music going. I hope you enjoyed these beautiful photos from Andy. Um, here we go. And go. <laughs> Yes, that was that. I hope you enjoyed that um, slideshow. Um, such amazing photos. Let me just remove that, get that off there, sub screen. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so that's a little bit of an overview of Nanjing um, and a lot of the places that we um, saw in, um, in that live stream, uh, in that slideshow we will be seeing today in Nanjing. I've just messaged our first guide for today, but it seems that she is running a little bit late. Um, so uh, she's going to need another five minutes. So in the meantime, 
Um, I'm going to answer some questions here. So have you got any questions, Nanjing or otherwise? I am ready to chat with you guys. Um, yes, Peter, they were very nice photos. So everyone make sure you follow Andy on Instagram. Um, have we got any people from Nanjing here today watching this live stream? Would love to know. Wait for that. Mm. Any other questions here? Okay. <laughs> Someone says, try all the duck delicacies in Nanjing. Um, definitely, that is the plan. We're going to go try some salty duck a little bit later. Oh, the sound. Oh, the sound. Is the sound is messed up now as I'm talking or it was messed up before? Can you hear me? Um, oh, excellent. We've got quite a few Nanjingers here. How fun. Um, yes, beautiful. I'm just going to check in again with Addy. <laughs> um, sorry about this delay, guys. I'll just see if she can join now. Um, she's going to um, join us now because I'm kind of just like reaching for chat right now. So we're going to get Addy to come in so that I've got someone to talk to. Um, still messed up when I talk. Hmm. I've got a couple of people that are saying that the sound is fine. Maybe if I move it a little bit closer. Um, a lot of people saying sound are fine. Oh, someone is asking me where are my glasses. I did actually get... Um, where are they? Mm. Oh, they're here. They're here. So I actually got my first ever pair of glasses because I'm having some trouble reading and for things close by. But yeah, those are my glasses. But now we have Addy, which is way more fun than my Hello, everybody. Hello, how are you? Welcome to Confucius Temple. Oh, cool. Hi, Looks beautiful. Yes, Hello. I'm how are you? the side of the Tinhuai River and I'm in Nanjing. My name is Addy. Oh, cool. So good to see you, Addy. So what are you doing in Nanjing at the moment? Why are you there? Yeah, so I'm doing music in Nanjing at the moment at Nanjing Arts University. So cool. I study anthropology, cultural studies, and my bachelor's was in Asian studies at Melbourne Uni. Oh, cool. Lovely. Yeah. So how do you like Nanjing? How is it like living there? You know, Nanjing is my favourite city in China. <laughs> Why is that? So actually my grandma came here in the 90s, my brother has studied here, and now I'm here. So it's kind of like a generational thing. Oh, wow. And, you know, Nanjing is the city of literature, the city of culture. Oh, wow. And it has so much modern history, but also ancient history. I can show you guys some of the, what I'm looking at at the moment. Probably it's much better than my face. <laughs> oh, wow. So here's the beautiful scenery of the oh, Confucius cool. Temple. I'm really looking forward to showing you guys, introducing the, why this place is called Confucius Temple, what yeah. all that means. Yeah, oh, cool. So are you like right at the entrance now or what, where, yes, where are you? Yeah, so I'm just at the entrance now and I can explain a little bit about Confucius Temple, this place called Fu Zi Miao. Mm -hmm. So one part of it is a Confucius Temple but it actually was the imperial area of examinations. Oh, so cool. So back in ancient China, basically, if you wanted to become an official or if you wanted to work in government, you had to take an imperial examination. And maybe the viewers don't know, but Nanjing was the capital city of six ancient dynasties. Wow. So a lot of people think Beijing is, you know, the ancient capital, but Nanjing is the Nanjing Southern <laughs> capital Nanjing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh cool. So I'll show you guys what I'm looking at right now. So as we walk into Fu Zimiao, you can see, can you see this huge area? Right yeah, here? yeah. What is that? Yeah, so these, can anyone guess what these are? Oh, let's be like in a, the line. Do you think it's a university? These are the dormitories. Oh wow. So this Please is where the imperial students trying to get become government officials would live in oh it looks pretty sweet it looks nice yeah. it's a beautiful day in nanjing can you see that it's oh it's so sky. nice 
I'm so glad yes. it didn't rain or anything today. It's such a nice day. Yes. So I'm going to take you guys into this dormitory place and we can have a little little look. What do you think? It sounds great. All right. Let's have a look. Oh. So this place is very yep. interesting. As you can see, these are the Imperial students. Oh, cool. It's bringing all their luggage in to move into their wow. dormitory, right? And why does this have anything to do with Confucius? Because Confucianism, you know, in one setting, Confucius is about uh, worshipping the teacher, Confucius. Yeah. But it's also about taking education as the number one thing in your yeah. life. So education is so important. And actually, Jiangsu Province is one of the education centres of China still. So Why is that? Is there a reason for that? Um, I just think it's it's it has something to do with the culture as well, and probably these you know imperial examinations because during the Ming Dynasty, that's when they really strengthened the imperial examination system, and of course the capital was in Nanjing. Okay, so it wasn't like the these imperial examinations happen everywhere. It was only in Nanjing that it would happen. So I think you had to come to the capital and do it here. So everyone would come from China. And yeah, they, they would go through here. So here are the, here's the entrance to the dormitories. Yeah. Wow. And what would actually happen is what what do these characters mean? These mean you you walk through it and you pass an uh, exam metaphorically. These are oh. the names of the exams. So you pass an exam when you walk past this area. So I wish it was that easy. <laughs> yeah, I wish. It's a bit of encouragement. And just over here, I'll show you very quickly. Yeah. Here are the dormitories. They're very thin. They're only about a meter wide. And these are the names of the dormitories here. So wait, yeah. a meter wide, the doorway is a meter wide or the whole the whole dormitory? The whole dormitory is one meter wide. So that's where they would sleep or where they would study? Yeah. Let's go have a look at where they would sleep. One and meter, that's rough. We can actually go inside a room right now. We're That'd be cool. We're going to their study room. And we're going to have a look about what the conditions were like if you wanted to study for the Imperial exam. <laughs> All right. I thought the girl car was intense that they have in China, um, which is like the end of year exam for high school students. The Imperial examination is just a whole nother kettle of fish. Yes, yes. So here is a, here's the area. We're going to have a look at how they studied. So you can kind of say that this area is kind of like the centre, you know, these are kind of like classrooms. Yeah. And on the floor there's like auspicious drawings to wish people good luck for their exams. You know, you would pray for your exams to be, to be good. Yeah. But let's first of all, let's go see how the study conditions were like because this is really oh. interesting. All right, so here we go. We walk into the the dormitory area, the study oh. area. Oh, is this the way you would study here? So, oh. Yes. So oh. you kind of go in like this. So you study <laughs> and you're locked in. You can't come out. You just like this. Oh, yeah. And then you could move this down and make it into a bed. Oh, so they'd actually sleep there. Yeah, you study and sleep in the exact same place and you would do this for about a month, three times oh every, yeah, so three times a week for about wow. a month. And there's many, many examinations, not just one single examination. There's what were the exams on? So, yeah, and as you can see, it's really small. Wow, I'm that's... A small person, but imagine like a six-foot person. I'm only like five foot. So yes, it's Studying would be one thing, but actually sleeping there is another. That is so small. Yeah, so small. yeah. So it's very interesting. Oh, that was so, really cool to see. Yeah. And so we also have, you know, another student here. And this image over here is showing all of the results, like the results day. Oh, oh can we get a closer look at that? Yeah, yeah. And then I'll take you to the actual Confucius temple. So those are people like celebrating their results? Yeah, or well, they're looking at see where oh. their results are. 
good or not. So everyone's names gets put there and everyone's results are public. So some people are praying, some people are very sad. You know, see this person, these people here on the floor, <laughs> they're really sad, you know. Aww. But then you have some people who are very happy. And then over here, if you can see this man in orange, he's praying, you know, because yeah. people would spend their whole lives to prepare yeah. for these exams. Because if you were able to pass this imperial examination, you know, and make Confucius proud, yeah. then your whole yeah. family would be elevated. You know, you could become from a farmer's son to a government official so this is really what the potential for these exams are yeah and I heard that the the people who actually get chosen are just so few of the people that actually take the test it's like one out of I don't know it was a crazy number the chances of actually getting selected are very very low yeah and most people would have to do it around two times two or three times um, yeah. And the exams not are not just writing like these modern exams. They also include Confucius's six R's, which oh. you know vary from calligraphy, music, um, shooting, like shooting an arrow. Yeah. Chari- even chari- charioteering is wow. a part of it. So it's looking for a round, like a well-rounded scholar, or you could say a junzi which is kind of like the ancient Chinese yeah. know, scholar. Yeah, because I guess, you know, you want your scholars to be able to, you know, ride horses and shoot people with arrows. Like, it's just in their day-to-day itinerary. Yeah. Oh, that looks silly. So as you can see, this is the most, oh, no, the most, you know, noisy and really fun area of Futsu This is yeah. really the centre of it. And as you can very real enough yeah very lively and these beautiful all of the buildings are like this as well the beautiful wooden designs yeah and they really make sure to keep the traditional feeling of this place and even though there's lots of businesses um they still very much maintain the traditional culture yeah oh it looks beautiful so that section that you just went to was the area for the examinations are you about to head into a se- another section? Is it like a two-part yeah, so kind are, of deal? We are here? now going to enter into the actual Temple of Confucius. Ooh. So we just went to the more practical area. So yes. Maybe the place with some pressure, study exam stress. Yeah. But now we're going to see the more religious, you know, component of this and how Confucianism really, you know, works in this area. So awesome. I I have been there. I have been there um, once before. I just want to share you a photo um, from when I was in uh, Fuzi Miao. So I took this photo and and I also got a selfie with Confucius. So (laughs) I just wanted to share that uh, just to add some some extra value to this uh, live stream. I hope everyone enjoyed that. Oh, so nice. So nice. So on the left side, we have Li, which is about Mm -hmm. ritual. Yep. Very beautiful. So ritual is really important in Chinese culture, and that's because of Confucianism. Yeah. And then we also have Ren, which is benevolence, which yeah. is about, you know, treating people good, the common good. And then it all comes back to this person in the middle, which is Confucius. And then he has eight disciples here. Okay. Maybe his, you could say his best students, you know. So a lot of Confucius writings were compiled by his students, oh. um, not necessarily written by him. He was the grand teacher that kind of sat there and spoke to people. Yeah. Were all of, um, I, I don't know if you know, but is, were all of Confucius's disciples, were they um, people that had passed that examination system or were they just people that he's collected? Um, oh, good question. I can ask my trusty... Ooh. My trusty tour guides with me. I have some amazing people oh, here. Great. Yeah. Yes. Oh, hey, Doug. Hello. <laughs> How when is his disciples? These people, they passed the exams. No. So they hadn't passed the exams. So these are very, you know, enthusiastic students. Basically. Was it Confucius that started the examination system? Oh, I think 
So Confucius is much comes much before the these examination systems actually started. Okay. So he's more of like a mythic kind of um, oh. important historical figure rather than maybe like a policy writer or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So here it is. It's a huge statue. So yeah. Right. And look, it's just such beautiful blue skies today. I just yeah. <laughs> we're so, so lucky. Nice. We're so lucky. Yeah. It feels like we're there. There we go. Ooh. So as you can see, so Confucius is from this period. You know, it's very, very oh okay. Yeah. yeah, from the state of Lu. Which is, I believe, in Shandong, I think. And yeah. these are prey sticks, so people can buy these um, kind of prey sticks and write a good message and then pray to Confucius. Then we also have this other wonderful bowl here. Ooh. A well. <gasps> this well is you can drop in your coins oh. to wish yourself oh. something. And Confucius hopefully will grant it. So as you can see, you know, people are dropping their coins in there. So we have, um, you know, hoping everything goes smoothly. We have um, wishing your health well. Of course, as you can see, there's lots of coins in there because of the yeah. pandemic, right? Yeah. So lots of people have tried to, you know, 祝身体健康. Mm. <laughs> and there's not so much for, for you know. Um, What's that one? For, for this one just to, to become to, famous no. oh, wait, wait, wait. oh to so there's not many for passing the exam and i'll oh, pass the exam i got yeah, that completely because if you pass the exam your name gets put up on the wall so yeah not many people really worry about that this year yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to put one in addy well i was going to put one in and i checked on my pockets and i don't have any coins maybe you can do a dance or do some What's it called? Like busking. Do some oh. singing. Someone can give you a coin. Oh, we're going to organize some coins right now. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. Oh, oh. So I'm going to get one coin. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, two. They've given me two. What a sinkful. Yeah. It's try. too quiet. Too quiet. What a sinkful. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. So. What do you think I should choose, guys? Definitely Shenzi Jiankang, in my opinion. Uh, wish your health well. All right, let's hope it lands there. Oh, it didn't land there. Again, oh, again, again. I'll try again. Okay. Oh, I can't see it. Did it land? You didn't. I don't think oh, you got it. Oh, well, the Gong. I'm so I failed. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, let's just fingers crossed, guys. Let's do that. Fingers that crossed. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, we'll do the fingers crossed method instead of yeah. the coin one. <laughs> yeah, it's just as effective. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last one. I'm going to be quite quiet here because people are actually praying to Confucius. So here's a very beautiful area. Yeah. Um, so Confucius, Confucianism is a philosophy, but it's also a, a religion as well. So this is a very religious place. Yeah, very beautiful there. Yeah, really and then, beautiful. Here we have the mighty Kong's mighty Confucius here. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, how many people would you say these days um, still practice Confucianism or what percent, would you say more people are Confucianists than they are another religion in China? Does your guide yeah, well, have more I feel or? like Confucianism, it's more of like a culture. It's like a part of the actual culture and way of seeing the world. Yeah. Um, it's not kind of like a Christianity um, type of religion. It's more about yeah. a, a a cultural system. So, you know, if you see the Gaokao or if you see, yeah. you know, how much education is so important to Chinese culture, you can definitely still see Confucianism. But also, you know, um, respecting parents, respecting elders and all of those things. It's yeah. still very here. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, thank you so much yeah. for that introduction. Um, is there anywhere else we're heading to before I switch on to our next guide? Is there anything else oh. you want to show up? Uh, Sorry if I speak Chinese. I, I just, oh. I'm with my, my tour guide. Great. But I need no, to speak. great. Speak as much <laughs> as you want.
it helps me yeah. with my Chinese, which is just getting worse and worse and worse the longer time I stay out of China. So, oh, you can call me anytime. We can. Oh, that'd be great. Time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll just show you this this beautiful architecture just over here, and we'll just kind of exit to the temple as we go out here. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful, and here is uh, just some. So this is kind of commemorating maybe people who have passed the exam. Yeah. yeah. And we'll just give a nice view of this garden. It's just so beautiful. Oh, it is so pretty. Yeah. And most most cities, I think, that I've been to at least have a Confucius temple. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll just end on, I think, Li, ritual, <laughs> treating people well, and then benevolence. Yeah. Love it. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Addy, for showing us around the Confucius Temple today. It was so informative. And um, we're going to be seeing you very soon. In about an hour, I'm going to be calling you again. And you're going to yes. take us to the food. I have a surprise for everyone. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I love surprises. Yeah. Everyone will have to stay tuned. Yeah. Don't leave our live stream. Just keep watching. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later, Addy. Bye. 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 Okie dokie. Thank you so much to Addy. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, so that was our first destination for today. I'm just going to send um, our next guest the link to join the live stream. There we go. And I just wanted to show you a bit of an overview of where we're going to be going next um, because it's absolutely stunning. So this is Nyo Shan. I think it was only built a couple of years ago. So when I first went to Nanjing, it didn't even exist. Um, and it's a Buddhist site. Um, our next guide, Corey, is going to tell us a bit more about it. And you can just see it's just so it's in such a beautiful location. It's a bit um, further out of the city a little bit, as you can tell. But it just seems to have a really nice vibe there. Um, I would love to go and visit it someday when I go back. And the architecture is just incredible. And there's a, as much like with religious buildings, there's a meaning behind everything. So we're going to learn about that, um, what these arches mean, what this is, what that is. Um, and this is inside. Inside is almost as beautiful as outside. Um, and we are going to be visiting this underground temple a little bit, a little bit later in the live stream. So something for us to look forward to. Um, but in the meantime... I'm just waiting for Corey to enter and then we will get started with our tour. But she is just, she'll be joining us very soon. Um, so I'm just going to answer some questions in the meantime. Um, mm -mm -mm, just having a look for any, yeah. I'm also wanting to go back to China, hopefully. We'll be heading back around March. Um, actually, my family and I just booked some tickets to uh, Tasmania, which is the island just off Australia. Um, so uh, that'll be the closest we come to traveling. In the <laughs> so I'm excited for that. But hopefully back to China in March. Oh, here we go. Corey is here. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hey Corey, how are you? Please, first, please allow me to change the camera. Yeah, no worries. Can, can you help me? Oh. Can you help me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Oh. Corey's gone, but she will, I hope, soon be back. <laughs> um, just experiencing some technical difficulties. Please bear with us for just a few moments. Um, someone has asked, how is life going there? Life's good. I have a bit of a routine. I'm making lots of videos, spending lots of time with my family. I hope you've been enjoying the food videos I've been making with my parents. Um, that's, that's been really fun to do. And, um, I'm excited for, uh, posting the next video, which will be on Tuesday. Um, it won't be spicy this week. The last few weeks I've taken them to eat a lot of spicy food. Um, sending Corey another message. Oh, here we go. Corey's back. Hello. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. But but I couldn't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can yeah. hear you. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. All oh, good. Uh I'll change the camera. So, Ooh. Oh, cool. Can you see me now? 
I can see you. I can see you. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. Hi. This is Laurie. Um, as a local guide of Legion, I speak English. He focuses on you. First, oh. let's take a look. Okay, Corey, we can't hear you super well. You're standing a little bit far from the camera, so it's a bit hard to hear you. Okay. So yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. That's really good. So do I have to uh, change back to my... Oh, no, you can, uh, whatever whatever oh, you'd yeah, like. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, now, now, now. Sorry, okay. there's too, too, too many visitors here. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit in the field. <laughs> okay. In the internet. So, yeah. So, uh, so we are just stand in front of Holding Palace. Holding, uh, like this. Holding means the Buddha's hat, actually. Buddha's hat. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, you can see also together this creature is like um, ships like the Buddha's gun protecting the Buddha's hat. Oh, Buddha gun protecting the yeah. head. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The part below, you see that? You see that? That all together. On um, fifty-six gay, fifty-six. Wow. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, they are composed of fifty-six petal-shaped gates. Each gate is carved with one flying apsala. Um, the apsala is the god of dancing in Buddhism. Oh. <laughs> when Buddhas assemble together, flying apsala dance to celebrate. Oh, cool. <laughs> So a lot of meaning behind this here. It looks really, really beautiful. Yeah, still very beautiful. So, um, it's a nice weather here. Oh, it's beautiful weather. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. So what's that tower over there on the other side to the right? Yeah. Ah, uh, um, it is actually the uh, boarding tower. Boarding tower. Boarding tower. Okay. So uh, yeah. um, yeah. Cool. It was first firstly uh, built in the Tang Dynasty. Okay. Yeah. So that's is that the oldest part of this place? Because I know that this was built very recently. This um, tourist uh, area. Yes. It was rebuilt. You know that in ancient China, all uh, all the structures are made of wood, so they were easily burned down during okay. the disasters or uh, fires, the wars. Yeah. Yes. And this place, and this place, you see the point at this place. Uh, yeah. In our Chinese tradition, that we first burn the incense and then we come into to pray to Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go. It's so beautiful there. I, I I I wish I could go and be there with you. It looks like such a beautiful day and such an interesting looking temple. Um, so this is a Buddhist site, right? Excuse me. So this is a Buddhist site, right? It's for Buddhism. Uh, this is the place to pay homage to Buddha. Okay. Oh. oh. So it, does this location have, um, why is this location? Because I know that Nanjing isn't a very, um, like there isn't a huge uh, Buddhist. Oh, uh, yes, yes. yes. I got it. Yes. Got yeah. Yusho yeah. yeah. Mountain has always been a famous Buddhism, Buddhist mountain. The mountain oh, why is that? A, yeah, the mountain has a unique look, like the head of an ox with two horns, has it was named. And during the Tang Dynasty, New To Zen was established initially here by Master yeah. Farong, who was honored as the Dalma of China. According mm. to New To Zen, all living creatures can become Buddha if you believe in Buddhism, such as mm. uh, bamboo, leaves, panda, a cloud or anything, a bird, oh. anything. <laughs> oh wow! So uh, you were saying that this site is called Yoshoshan, which um is because of the like the mountains it's shaped like you. Uh, yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. And then that's why this became like a a Buddhist site. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, has always been a famous Buddhist mount. Interesting. Okay, and and then they built this um this site here a, a couple of years ago, right? This is all very new. Yes. It looks you see the beautiful. Light wow. uh, yes. Oh, the dang Why dancing, yes. um, dancing gods. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Very oh, the detail is just incredible. I don't, I don't know. People can comment in the chat, but I've never seen um, a site like this in China. I've never seen a site like this in China. 
what you guys think in the live chat. What do you think about this building? I think it's so special. I really love the look of it. Yes. And this bit is really nice here as well. The um the corridor. Yes, it's it's very wow. long corridor. Many I many many people take pictures here, like uh, the famous one home that yeah. uh, on internet celebrities. Yeah. So Corey and I were talking a couple of days ago and Corey was telling me how this is where all the influencers come to get their photos. And I can understand like that would be such an awesome place to get some photos. Yeah. Uh, we are on the way to a secret place called Zen Scenery. Okay. Let's have a quick look at it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I will move fast. Very, very <laughs> fast. All good. All good. Can oh, wow. That? You see that? Very beautiful. You see that? Wow. Yes. You see, oh, is that see a Buddha? living Buddha there? Yeah. Yeah. He's rotating very slowly in a full circle here. Yeah. Um, so so wherever you stand, you will meet you will meet his smile. <laughs> That's so good. That's so yeah, nice. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful smile. That? This is the light controller. With it, we can simulate in the different times of the day, like morning, noon, or afternoon, or year. Oh, okay. So the, inside this building, yes, it yes, has yes, its yes. own lighting system, so it can make yes, it look like yes. the time of the yes. day. That's it's cool. like a tree. It's like a tree. It is. It's, lot, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So you have a very nice then how's the experience here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's it looks lovely. Um, what a special area. Yeah. So uh, there will be two programs here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, usually one in 1030 in the morning and another oh, okay. one in 14 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, OK. So what happens during those programs? Just uh, just on this circle stage. Oh, okay. Oh, so people are dancing. Yes. Oh. The artists here will show the uh, splendid light of the Sakyamuni. Just the, oh, cool. just the name of the lying Buddha here. Okay. So anyone who's in Nanjing and wants to go visit, if you go at, I think um, Corey said 10.30 or around 2 p.m., there's a live uh, performance. Yeah. So yes, that might yes. be nice to yes, have a look at. Wow. It looks amazing, Corey. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so it's almost time for us to head on to our next um, our next uh, live stream guide. Is there anything you'd like to show us in the last few minutes or have you um, pretty much yes. shown what you know? Yes, trust me, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> okay, so you're good? Yeah, see you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, see you soon. Bye. <laughs> So uh, Corey will be joining us again in about uh, 20 minutes after our next guide. Um, so she's going to be showing us the underground area of Niu Shoshan. And I showed you a picture earlier um, of that amazing temple underground. But seriously, the temple is just so impressive. It really has just so much going on, so many details. Like, uh, I really wish I could um, go and check that out. And when I do get the opportunity to go back to Nanjing, that's definitely going to be right up there on uh, on my agenda. Um, so next up, we are going to Ivana, who is going to be taking us to uh, the city wall of Nanjing. And uh, this is the city wall, a photo by Andy. And um, this is me in front of the city wall at 2014. I didn't actually go on top of the wall, but I stood in front of it, which is halfway there. And um, yeah, excited to say hi to Ivana. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm Ivana, and yeah. uh, I have been living here in Nanjing for 10 years. So wow. Nanjing is my other home for over a decade. Wow. And it is it is beautiful city. I really enjoy my living here. Um, yeah. Nanjing is very very uh, clean and green. Yeah. Um, it's amazing city. And it's very friendly. People here are, are great. Warm party and speak, very friendly. Can you speak any of the local Nanjing dialect? No, I can just speak uh, Putonghua. Yeah, uh, I'm fluent in Mandarin, but no Nanjing Hua. No. <laughs> yeah. No. I thought that would be interesting. Um, yeah, cool. So where are you today? Can you introduce what you're going to be showing us? 
Uh, I'm in front of um, Nanjing City Wall. Yep. Um, just a second. I lost you. <laughs> Am I back? Am I back? Hello? Oh, yeah. Cool. So cool. I'm in front of uh, Nanjing City Wall. Yep. yep. And here I'm going to show you a map of how that city wall looked like before. Yep. So yep. city wall has remained a integral part of uh, Nanjing's long history. And mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. reinforms the identity and furthering one's understanding of the Chinese ancient capital. Also, it represents the peak of Asian capital construction in East Asia. So you can see how Nanjing looked like during Ming Dynasty. Yeah. So it was yeah. divided into four different parts, inner and outer parts. And there was a palace city. The palace city was a prototype for a forbidden city in Beijing um, later on. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how it looked like. And you see that it was all surrounded by high city wall. Oh, wow. Um, I'm not sure if you just said it um, and I missed it, but when was the city wall built? City walls built uh, in 14th century okay. uh, during uh, Zhu Yanzhang. So he was mm -hmm. the first emperor of uh, Ming Dynasty and it yep. took them 28 years to build city wall. So 28 now, years? That's not that long, yeah. yeah. Yeah, great. So now let's climb. Let's climb the city okay. wall. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, okay, so while we are climbing, I'm going to um, introduce like a short history of Nanjing to you. Perfect. So Nanjing is an Asian city and it has a very long history. Mm -hmm. So in 4th century BCE, the state of Chu set up the county of Jinling on Stone Mountain. And then after that, during the Three Kingdoms period, the state of Wu founded the capital in Jianye, which is present-day Nanjing. And Jian Kang was also served as capital of Eastern Jin Dynasty, Sun, Qi, Liang, Chen, and four empires of Southern Dynasties. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, uh, the first emperor of, of Ming also founded the capital here in Nanjing. And in that time, this is when city wall was built. Wow. So in that time, Nanjing had like 700,000 people, <laughs> wow. uh, which is a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, still a lot, but nothing compared to today. Do you know what nothing, the... Um, <laughs> nothing, yeah. What's the but population time, of Nanjing so now, roughly? Mm, yeah. So in, in 15th century, when they moved capital city from Nanjing to Beijing, mm -hmm. uh, Nanjing still was a very big city. And until mid of Ming Dynasty, it had 1.2 million people. And what is the, it was the largest capital city in the world at that time. Wow. Yeah. So uh, today, of course, Nanjing is a very, very big city. It's the capital of Jiangsu province and it has more than 10 million people. Oh, wow. I love this wall. It's so beautiful. It is. It's it is. very different to the other city walls I've seen before, like in um, Xi'an. And I love how the rocks are those different colors. Um, it, yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, it is. It is the, the best preserved city wall in the world. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. Um, so even uh, at that time, Italian missionary Matteo Ricci, he wrote in his book that city is so prosperous that it's not able to stand uh, comparison with any larger city capital, European uh, capital in 16th century. Wow. Yeah. So you mentioned um, the different colors. Yeah. Um, so you can see that the main building material yep. of the wall are bricks. Yeah. Um, and this is very, very interesting. All the bricks are different colors, and I'm going to let, let you know why. Uh, because bricks ca came from many different places here uh, in China, uh, but they're all same in size, more or less. So it's like 40 centimeters long, yeah. uh, 20 centimeters wide, and 10 centimeters um, here. I just so, lost your image for some reason. Um, just one second before you continue. For some reason, the screen oh, screen has gone black. Oh, 
You may have to um, leave the live stream and then come back here. Oh, you're back. You're back. Excellent. <laughs> All good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So can you see here Chinese characters? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So like very interesting thing about these bricks is that each brick has inscription. Wow. Every sing ev Wait, did you say every single brick? Every single brick. And you know what is written on the bricks? It is what? like um, the artisan name, the origin of the brick, uh, and like the person in charge who made this brick. So according wow. to this, you can see here, it's beautiful and we can see still inscriptions like 650 years. Wow. <laughs> it's still here. It's and, amazing. And how many bricks do you think would be on this wall? So it's around 100 million bricks. And every single one of them is in inscripted. That's, oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Wow. That's such a cool little fun fact. Um, I'll definitely pay attention to that when I go so, to that gym. So according to statistics, since all of these bricks have inscriptions about the original production, more than 200 counties of China provided 100 million of bricks of Nanjing City Hall. So even wow. Buddhist monasteries and Taoist temples joined the row. Wow, so the bits of stone from all around, is it just the, the, the province or around China? Correct, yeah. And that's why all the bricks are different in colors. Yeah. That's, such a, that's so cool because I noticed it and it's kind of different to other city walls that are mostly just the same color of bricks. Um, but yeah, it makes it look really interesting. Um, very visually appealing. Yeah. So like today we are walking on this wall and today 19 kilometers of this wall is still well preserved and open for tourists. And I want just to show you like the position of the city wall because we are here at Xianwufu Qian, Lake. Yeah. yeah. And now you can see. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's so beautiful. It is the city center. Yeah. And the history of this young lake can be traced back to pre Qing period, so a very yeah. long time ago. And the name of the lake has changed several times during the long history. Yeah. So the lake gained the name Xianwu because Black Dragon was said to be in the lake. Ooh. Yeah. It is oh, that's huge. the Black Dragon there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So the lake is huge. Uh, it's like 472 hectares. And is it a natural is, lake? And it, sorry? Is it a natural lake or is it man-made? I think that the parts of, of this lake are man-made. Yeah. Okay. But it was the largest imperial lake garden in Chinese history. Yeah, and I can imagine. The, yeah, and it's also the largest downtown park in south of China. Oh, so it's cool. very, very big. Yeah, I love that about Nanjing. It's so green and lots of public spaces to hang out. Yeah, this is this is why I love this city. Yeah. So um, the park, you know, it's like traditional Chinese parks with a lot of rocks and walkways. Yeah. Um, and it has like five aisles. And yeah. people used to come here, foreigners, tourists, people around China. This is like master see spots in Nanjing because yeah. of, for me it's like a soul of Nanjing it's in the city center and when you enter it it, it literally embraces you with kind of serenity and immediately you feel calm and secure. yeah I had a um I had a chat um a couple of weeks ago on one of my first live streams um we were in Wuhan mm -hmm. and my friend was taking us around Wuhan University and my friend was talking about the Confucian concept of uh, yin and yang and how the most places with good vibes are generally places with a lot of uh, mountains next to um, river and civilization next to, you know, the slower elements. So I guess uh, Nanjing is a place that really uh, follows that principle, has good, uh, can I say tea maybe? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like it's good feng shui. It's like Chinese. Good feng shui, yeah. So let's go here inside. Here inside is like a small shop and a small museum where Ooh. you can see the map, uh, which I already showed you downstairs. And we're gonna go to 
another part of the city wall. Yep. Oh, this is yeah, fun. It's, cool. it's <laughs> nice. Nice door. <laughs> What's the weather like there? Well, I mean, what temperature is it right now? Oh, uh, today is beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful day today. It's like, I don't know, it's maybe 15 degrees. Oh, wow. That's and beautiful. Sunny, it's it's very pleasant. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so oh. here we have Xiangwu Lake. Yep. Down there, it's mm -hmm. uh, Zhongshan Lin. Oh, and at the Sun Yat Sen Temple? Yes, Sun Yat Sen Mausoleum. It's oh, yes. over there. Uh, and it's also a famous scenic spot here in, in Nanjing. Oh, yeah. And here on our right is over there. Yeah. Is Jimin Temple. Oh, yeah. That was a very familiar site because um, Andy shared some photos with us earlier and he has a beautiful photo of this exact image. Yeah, it's such a beautiful oh. um, scene there. Old and the new, contrasting. That's right. So that's why I love this place because you can see the Nanjing. Uh, its characteristics is like an ancient city, mm -hmm. but it's a very, very modern one. And that's, that's why I like this view, because we have a Jimin temple also dated from Ming Dynasty. And then you have um, this tall building over there. It's like the tallest building in Nanjing, Zifeng Tower. Oh, wow. How, do you know how tall it is, roughly? I think 470 meters, something like that. Wow, that's really tall, yeah. It's like almost 80 floors. Yeah. Yeah, very, very wow. cool. Yeah. So about Jimin Temple, there is like very interesting legend, which says why it got its name. Because okay. Jimin, oh. literally in Chinese, means uh, crow of the rooster. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it was said that a long, long time ago, there was like a dragon who always frightened other people. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Jade Emperor heard of it and appointed the golden rooster to deal with that dragon. Oh, wow, so okay. Golden Rooster was so brave that he killed the dragon. And because of that, um, people named the temple Jiming, which means the crow of the rooster to be in memory of the golden rooster. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's interesting, yes. Yeah. So here, I love this part of the city, especially in spring. Because starting like this street here from Jimin Temple, which goes like from the Jiefang Gate here, yeah. uh, it's full of sakura trees. Oh, beautiful cherry blossoms. Oh, that's so, nice. So like in late March and, and early April, uh, it, it's full of sakura trees and it's like everything is white and pink and it, it looks like you enter a fairy tale. Oh, wow, I'd love to visit there in the spring. Yeah, so this is my favorite place in Nanjing, actually. Lovely. Yeah, and you can see, this is a good place to see the height of the wall. Mm -hmm. So the height is different in different parts, but here is oh, around yeah. like 20 meters high. Yeah, so. that's, yeah, it's very high. It's very high. <laughs> very you know. sturdy. No wonder it's so old and it looks so good. It's been built big and it's been built well <laughs> <laughs> with all of those inscripted bricks do you think the bricks even under under the bridge that you the bricks that you can't even see do you think they're also inscripted as well or only the bricks that you can see that's a good question well i hope so <laughs> yeah <laughs> because like each each brick should be inscripted before transferred to here so i think that each okay. of the bricks has some some descriptions yeah that's for sure mm. So, so the Nanjing city wall, it's really a great place to see. Yeah. And it holds much multicultural value and it really deserves its reputation of an outdoor treasure. Oh, awesome. It, 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 looks, it, it looks beautiful. And we've been so lucky with the weather today. I, I'm sure everyone yeah. watching this live stream wishes they were in Nanjing right now. Yeah. Okay, so is there anything yeah, else? Yeah, you and, and, and just just like to tell you that a Nanjing city wall ranks first among the world city walls in terms of both length and size. Oh wow! Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Nice fun, so fun have fact. We like ninety kilometers now in in uh, 
in Nanjing to be seen. That's so cool. Thank you so much for showing us around the city wall today, Amana. Is there anything you'd like to add before we, before we go to our next guide? No, I hope that you like this walk and that you love the Nanjing. So enjoy your time in oh, Nanjing. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and the beautiful weather. Thank you. Good to chat. Bye. Bye. Okie dokie. Um, I'm going to say goodbye to Ivana now. Oh, that was so great. The weather there looks so nice and beautiful. It makes me wish I was there. Um, so next section, um, I've just sent the link again to Corey, who is going to join, join us for a second time. And as promised, she's going to be showing us that beautiful underground section of the um, Nyo Shoshan uh, temple. So I'm really excited for that. And I, um, I, I had a walkthrough with Corey a few days ago. And it's just like so jaw-droppingly like I don't even know how to explain it. I've never seen a place like it um it's extra it's very very extra so I'm just waiting for Corey to come in um so we can uh see that so she might be another minute or so um but I hope that you guys are enjoying this live stream so much for me it's been um it's been really really fun and um it's good. a lot of the other places we've been to before on these live streams I've been to uh, a few times so this is the first time I've been somewhere um, I don't know so well. But... Oh, look at this. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Where are Plenty you, Corey? Like Hello. Maliviosa. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Very, very, very beautiful. Magnificent. So It um, is magnificent, yes. Yes. We're, we're here in the Southern Buddha Palace. Yep. Uh, th this is a pure and solemn world. They are all together 1,343 Buddhas here. So on what the dome, dome? yes, on the okay. dome is the Western paradise. Wow. Buddhism believes that people who have done good deeds will go to the Western paradise after they die. Do you okay. see that? The so that's that hole up there? Oh, oh the, the thing on the top of the, um, so not the eye, but the thing on top of that, uh, I don't know what you call that. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Okay. Later, oh, cool. I will introduce that. <laughs> the eye. Okay, cool. Got yeah. it. So, so, so let's first take a circle around here. Show us around, Corey. The stage yeah. is yours. Yeah, this, so uh, the, the highest pagoda in the center represents the standard Buddha. And you will see four other Buddhas in other four directions. Mm -hmm. And on each, uh, you will see that on the corner, on each corner, yep. there, yep. Are, there are all together four major Buddhas represents Oh, all Buddhas. Pictures on, under it? Do you see the pictures under it? Yes. There are the, uh, there are pictures showing Sakyamuni's whole life and on the most important four stages. Oh, oh nice. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. What else is happening there? See this? Yep. Yes. Oh, this, that's the, the Buddhist remains. I remember you. Yeah, the yes, yes, remains. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, that two characters there uh, pronounced like Salila <laughs> in Sanskrit. <laughs> yeah, I think Actually, the majority this is of us. why this place mm -hmm. was built for receiving, for receiving it. Oh, okay. Uh, so this whole temple was built to yes, receive yes, Buddha. Yes. yes. Okay. So, and uh, um, this is. Where are they? Are they in the temple still, or you only get to see them at certain times, or? Uh, but um, uh, but this uh, relic of Sakyamuni's parietal bone only could be seen only in twenty-one days a year, obviously not including today. <laughs> okay, so only a few days of the year you can actually see these remains. Yes, yes. So wow. um, this is the symbol of supremely wisdom. And um, 2005 years ago, Sakyamuni Nirvana and left over several relics, which are called Salila. Salila, Salila okay. in Sanskrit. And um, according to history, a 980 Indian monk took Sakyamuni's pariah to bone to Nanjing. And then in 1011, the monk of Chang'an Temple, yeah. Master Ke Zhen, 
buried the Buddha's parietal bone relics in the underground palace. And in 2008, archaeologists discovered the underground palace in Nanjing Da Bao En Temple, another oh. very famous temple. Yeah. And discovered this iron container of Buddha's relics. So, okay. So um, in 2015, Sakyamuni Buddha's parietal bone was finally received by the Niosho Mountain. Mm -hmm. So this is why this place is so splendid and so important in the whole, how to say, Buddhism world. Yeah. It's a holy place. It, yeah, it's very impressive. Uh, yes. I'm not even there, but I feel it's impact like i feel very impressed by it it feels very special yeah but actually um it is a little bit far from the city center of nanjing you know <laughs> oh how far away is it yeah it's about uh, one hour to, to drive oh, one hour. Here okay we'll yeah but um this is idea place to relax and have a zen experience Oh, that's very true. I wonder if they do some meditation retreats here at New Shoshan. I'd love to try that. Yeah. Uh, Prepare at least half a day. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and there is a famous vegetarian buffet inside the same area. Oh, so I, that makes sense. Try yes, it. because Buddhists don't eat meat. Yeah. Ooh, I have to take my sister there. My sister is vegetarian and she loves buffets. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She yeah. would enjoy the vegetarian buffet very much. <laughs> Very pretty. Wow. Does anyone in the live chat here have any questions for Corey um, that you would like to ask about this temple? Maybe she'll be able to answer you while she's there. Um, it's so nice. Yes. We'll see if there's anyone who has any questions um, about this uh, about this place. Oh, what is this? Uh, the projections. Projections. Of Sakyamuni's oh. varietal bone. Okay, so this is the like a a project a, a projection of that those remains. Okay. Yes, yes, that remains. Hmm. So when they show the remains, and you're at the twenty days a year that you're allowed to see it, are there many people that come to see it? It must be a very busy day there, right? Yes. Uh, several very very famous monks were came here to uh, how to to celebrate to carry on the. Uh, like uh, in a Spanish fiesta. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just here. Um, there's a question um, uh, from someone here saying, do people light the xiang here? No, no, no. Outside. 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 Okay. In, in our tr tradition, we first light xiang and we came into this palace to pray. And there's also another question here. Is there any music there? Yes, yes. It's a uh, Sanskrit music inside. Okay. Sanskrit music, and some um, some musics are from a famous, how to say, famous emperor, yeah. named as Cao Zhi. Okay. And um, someone else has asked another question. Uh, can you go on a meditation retreat there? I also want to know the the answer to that. Do you think they do like um, maybe a two or three day retreats um, a, that you can just meditate here and learn about Buddhism? Do you think they offer yes, that? Yes. yes, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. I'd recommend anyone who's interested to maybe Google it or look it up on the internet to see. But I think I would love to do that. That looks so much fun. Uh, not fun, but like, what do you call it? Impactful. Um, yeah, wow. Such a beautiful place. Thank you so much for taking us there, Corey. Is there anything you'd like to show us before we move on to our last live stream segment for today? Almost finished here. <laughs> there, oh, are okay. the, there are out corridors. You will see many Buddhists also there too. Oh, <laughs> oh so that's, 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 oh yeah, so you can see to the outside there. Wow, yeah. lots of Buddhas, yeah. There, there were altogether 12 Buddhas uh, related to Zodiac. <laughs> you know Chinese oh, okay. Zodiac? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I yeah. didn't know that. <laughs> every Buddha look after for um, every year, like the year of an ox, year of a horse, year of a monkey, something okay. like this. 
Oh, do you know what Buddha looks after the year of the rat, the ra the year that we're in right now? Uh, year of rat? Uh, actually, it, it's pronounced in Sanskrit. I don't know if I pronounce it, you, you, you will understand. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. It's probably a silly question because I'll probably not understand what you say anyway. <laughs> I don't speak Sanskrit, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so hard. Okie dokie. Well, I might uh, say goodbye to you there, Corey. We've got Addy with her food. She's just ordered some Nanjing salty duck. Um, so we're going to go across to her now and um, eat some food. Thank you so much for today, Corey. Thank you. <laughs> My Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank <laughs> See you next next time. time. Bye. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you so much to Corey for all of her wonderful information. Um, I'm just going to send the live stream link to Addy. And as promised, we are going to eat some food. Um, a very famous dish from Nanjing, um, as Addy is going to explain to us, is the Nanjing salty duck. And uh, yeah, I wonder how it compares to the Beijing kaoya, the Beijing Peking duck um, that a lot of us know and love. Um, let's say hi. Uh, hi. Oh, hi, you're not Addy. Hello, hello. Addy, you've changed your appearance. <laughs> All right, we'll start, we'll start one more time. Hold okay. On. Hold on, everyone. Yep. Oh, hold on, hold on. We're going to do... Sorry, everyone. Don't worry, no rush. <laughs> All right, go for it. We're going to start it one more time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, you know, you know, little bit. so this is very special Nanjing <laughs> dishes. <laughs> this is uh Ya Shui Fen Si Tang. Wow. So as you can see it has the Fen Si Tang that it's so beautiful. So crystalline noodles, we have tofu and we have duck in here. Now another thing that we have is salted duck. This is uh Yan Shui Ya. So salted duck is very famous in Nanjing. You can say Nanjing is the duck city. The duck I don't know. Can you also say that in Beijing? Beijing would probably say we're the duck city. <laughs> so Nanjing, everywhere, uh, like all you can see, if you go on the road, you can see duck shops everywhere. We can buy oh, wow. salted duck. So salted duck is very special. I'll show you guys. So is it cold? Meat. It's served cold. Yes. Yeah. Cold, and they get they put it in a soup right they yep. put it in a soup and it brings up all of the flavors and this is from nanjing's river system so nanjing is uh from the uh yangtze river yangtze, mm -hmm. yeah, and also the tinhuai plot which is just to our side over here oh so, so that's the tinhuai plot okay yeah, as I mentioned so earlier right. in the live stream, you've got the Yangtze River and the Tsinghua. So, and Nanjing is in the intersection of those two big rivers, right? Yes. So that is why we eat duck in Nanjing. If you Love it. Duck in Nanjing, I think you've never been to Nanjing. Heidi, so, I think I have to tell you. I have to let you know. I don't think I did eat duck when I was in Nanjing my first time. So, I really need to come and pay a visit and get some duck. You do. You. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We're speaking some Nanjing dialect, so I'm so impressed. Achibola is and then if you haven't eaten, you say mele. <laughs> mele. Mm -hmm. Let me finish this this mouthful of salted duck, and yep. my wonderful friend here is going to show you this beautiful scenery of this this local shop. <laughs> So smooth, Addy, smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us how, how does it taste? <laughs> it's salty. Oh, no it's very salty. Love that. Now, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a surprise. Oh, and I'm here with um, Mr. Lu, the owner of the restaurant. Oh. And, Mr. Lu, and I'm going to perform a instrument for everyone. Is that all right? Um, yes, it's like, okay. Is that okay? What, what are you playing there? What is that? Oh, is that a pipa? So this instrument. Oh no, it's not a pipa. And basically, this is like if you want to think of it like a pumpkin, right? Oh yeah. It's like a pumpkin, but it's called a gourd, and then attached here is the uh, bamboo. And What's this the is a minority ethnic instrument native to the southern China. So oh, wow. I'm going to play a uh, a Jiangsu 
quote song to you. And I think you'll all know. So maybe I can stand. I'll stand just over here and I'll play it for you guys. Okay, ready? playing it for oh so I, let me just flip the camera around mm -hmm. so i've been playing it for about two years wow yeah. that was so, so it's impressive. really my it's really my hobby oh do you play any other um chinese instruments as well yeah so i just started learning the xiao which is like a very long bamboo flute and you wow. play it you play it um vertically not horizontally okay oh yeah. wow you some time by the way of course. Well, you're the last section for today, so take as long as you like. Okay. Well, um, I probably want to. I want to pay for my lunch because I want to really support the local businesses here. So, Good. first of all, I want to take you guys to another type of snack. Um, I want to take you guys to another type of snack. Um, I want to take you guys to another type of snack. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to take you to look at my favorite candy. Called Tang Hulu, which so happens to be my Chinese name. So I'm named after a snack called Tang Hulu. Who gave you this name? So actually, I have some Chinese family, and they gave me this name because I usually have a red face, so I'm quite pale, and I'm sweet and happy. So that's why they gave me this name. So your literal and name in Chinese is Tang Hulu. Tang Hulu, yes, you can call me Tang Hulu, and um. Here, we'll take. I'll show you this place over here. I think it it looks really nice. All right. Sorry, sometimes changing the camera around. No worries. Thank you. Yeah. Just the suspense, you know. Oh, so oh, this oh, is tangkolo. Oh. Yeah. So it's like different fruits. It's like candied fruit. It's yeah. kind of like you know, like the candied apples that we have. Mm -hmm. In the West, yes, this is Tang Hulu. And look, the sugar is literally dropping off it as we speak. Okay. Yeah, it's very messy on a hot day when you eat one of those. Um, what's yeah, your favorite? So on the outside, it's sweet, and then usually it's on it's sour on the inside. So that's kind of the Tang Hulu. I'm probably not going to buy one, unfortunately, because... Messy to eat on the live stream. Big group. secret, which I'm going to tell on live stream. I don't really like Tong Hulu that much, but I appreciate the cultural value of it. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're named after it and you don't like it. But it is sweet and a happy thing to eat. So I can see how yeah. you – that's your name. Yeah, it's so nice. So I will go back to that little restaurant we were at because it's just such a beautiful area. Wow. So, so are you close to the Confucius Temple here now? Yeah, so we're still in the Confucius Temple. It's actually a massive complex. So okay. because the Imperial Exams, it's like a the Imperial Exams are here and then it there's heaps of complexes, like maybe scholars' houses, mm -hmm. or maybe there were kind of like classrooms or you know, there's it's a huge yeah. complex really. And this is the beautiful Qinhuai He, the Qinhuai River. As you can see. With all the it's ducks. It's so beautiful. Yeah, the, I can't see any ducks right now, but I know that there are lots of ducks. Maybe they're all being eaten. Well, yeah, the, ducks beware. The city of ducks. You don't want to be a duck in Nanjing, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so that's so beautiful here. And oh, this is very, this this architecture is very famous in the southern, southern yeah. China. I was going to say, it reminds me a lot of Suzhou, the vibe, with all of the yes. white um, buildings and the river there. Um, exactly. Suzhou is very close and yeah. has a, quite a similar um, 
style, I guess, here. Yeah. So, you know, with Nanjing being the grand uh, southern capital, Suzhou is only an hour or two hour drive away. So, yeah. of course, it, it, it got the imp- some influence from the ancient capitals of Nanjing. Yeah. Do you often go traveling to the nearby cities around you? Like, do you, are you often in Shanghai, Suzhou, Hangzhou? Do you take advantage of that, uh, the closeness? Well, I think if it wasn't, if we weren't in a pandemic here, then yes. Oh, yeah. I think That's I would be um, traveling every weekend. But um, we, we, we tend to stay within the province or within yeah. our city. Um, yeah. Just for, even though it's safe, it's just kind of like a, yeah, no. Not much traveling this year, but hopefully next year we can, you know, travel around a bit more, which probably yeah. will be very likely. Oh, uh, um, how much longer will you be in China for? I'll probably still be. I'll probably stay in China for maybe a few years. I have some research, music research. I have to continue doing, and that takes a long time. So wow. You li- li- live a great life studying Chinese music and um, it sounds like you've got a real, you're on a real roll there. Oh, it's so nice. And we have to say thank you so much for this. Oh, my thank wonderful you so ride. much. Oh, it was yes. wonderful. Who did the wonderful camera work at the start of this little bit. It was appreciated. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, and then here's some more snacks as well. I love eating this. Have you eaten this before? Feihua something zhi. Yeah, so it's lian ou. It's like lotus oh, fruit. Oh, it's lotus fruit. Weird with yeah. sticky rice inside yeah then we also have chou doufu of course like very famous stinky yeah. tofu yeah and um, most of these are from duck so this is duck 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 this is crab so mm. nice this is also um yeah this is goose over here so lots of river oh cool yes it's beautiful well, i can't wait to come to nanjing one day and eat some duck with you decimate yeah. the duck population yeah, exactly. I'll I'll um, take you to have lots of great duck. I'll play you music as well. Actually, fun fact. Um, fun fact. I am actually going to take some of my friends to eat uh, Nanjing uh, salty duck tomorrow. Wow, yeah, is there in- a place in Australia? Yeah, there's a Nanjing restaurant in Chinatown here in Sydney, and I've been wanting to go for, to it for ages. And I thought, well, now's the time to do it. Now I'm hearing all about it, and I've not, never actually tried salty duck before, so. I don't know how, how good it's going to be, um, whether it'll be authentic or not, but I'll let you know. If it's salty, then it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep oh, that in so mind. Much. Well, yeah. thank you so much for today, Addy. Is there anything else you'd like to um, say or share before um, we say goodbye? Yeah, sure, sure. So um, I'll only share. So if any of you guys are interested in cultural exchange, uh, learning Chinese and and um, maybe Australia China stuff, get involved in the Australia China Youth Association called ACIA. We have Facebook pages on Instagram as well. So it's just A C Y A. Yeah, Australia China Youth Association. We have a writing competition going on. We have um, video competitions, and it's all about cultural exchange and, you know, learning more about each other's cultures and bringing people together, which is what I'm passionate about. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing that, Addy. I was a part of ACYA in Shanghai um, when I was studying there. I was um, communications manager for the ACYA ACYA Fudan chapter. So, um, yeah, if you're Australian and you've got anything to do with China, make sure you get amongst it. Um, Yeah, and we also really encourage Chinese international students to to be a part of us as well. Awesome. Oh, that's really great. If any international students are watching, um, please, please join Akia. Um, Awesome. Thank you, Addy. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Thank you See you so next much, time. Bye. Thank you. Oh, that was wonderful. I feel quite hungry now after seeing all of that yummy duck. Um, that is the end of our live stream for today. That's our last segment. Um, how did you guys like it? Let me know what you thought of the live stream uh, today. Someone just asked um, if the stream just started. No. Um, It just finished, but I will stick around here and answer a few questions before I head off. So if anyone has a question about Nanjing or otherwise, um, let me know. Um, Let me know how I can improve this live stream for next time. I'm still uh, trying to perfect it and make it as user 
uh, nice for the nice for you guys as possible. So um, let me know what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of. Um, someone has asked me, can you say hello to my fiance for me, please? Her name's Tina and she's in Nanjing while I'm in Sydney. Hello, Tina. Hello from Amy. Um, I hope you're doing well and uh, having fun in Nanjing. I hope that did the trick for you. Um, let's see what else people are saying. Oh, yay. Thank you guys for the for the nice uh, comments here. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, if you do have any more feedback you'd like to give about it, um, of what you liked, what you didn't like, you can comment below after the live stream. Um, really enjoy reading your comments. It helps me improve and um, get better for next time. Um, someone said mukbang next time. Yeah, actually, that could be fun. Uh, would you guys watch if I did a, a, a mukbang live stream one day? For, you, for those of you who don't know, mukbang is basically just eating a lot of food, which I'm very good at. So maybe if I put a camera in front of me, I could, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, make something fr from my talent of eating. Um, can I please have a better camera? Is my camera not good? Um, let me know what you guys think of my camera. Um, I guess I'm just using my computer uh, webcam here. Hello. Um, so I'll see if I should upgrade to a proper camera. One thing I did upgrade in the last few weeks is one of these fancy live stream lights here. So we're improving slowly but surely. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, that's such a lovely comment. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you enjoyed the guests um, that we've been having on these live streams. And that's really credit to um, my partner for this live stream um, series, which is the When Koala Meets Panda YouTube channel. You can follow them down below. They are the ones responsible that are finding me these amazing people in Nanding um, to talk to and to guide us around. Um, so thank you so much for that again. Um, someone said, uh, so much history info today do you feel it hard to grasp um no i, I don't think so because um I, some of the history i knew already some of the more complicated stuff i'm going to go back and read a bit more about what i tend to do on my recent trips to china um so not so much back when i just arrived in china at 2014 i was just going places and just having fun but more so now when i do my trips i like to do a lot of background information about the places i visit i really love history i'm a bit of a history buff and i love reading up about the different places i go so um i i do know a, a li i'm not a lot about but a little bit about chinese history so um yeah, always happy to learn new things. And um, yeah, some a lot of things in the stream today I didn't know about because I have been to Nanjing, but only once. And it was so long ago. And back then I didn't really know anything much about China. So I feel like going again now with um, now I know a little bit more about the country. It would be really uh, worthwhile. Someone says they're hungry after watching the video. Good. Go and get yourself some food. Um, and so you want me to speak some Chinese? 好的但是我跟你们说我的中文真的退步了我每个星期两次跟一个中文老师说话所以我 Jayo. Okay, so there was some Chinese for you guys. Um, I'm by no means any kind of Chinese uh, Mandarin expert. Um, I can get myself around, I can communicate, but I'm, yeah, not going to call myself any kind of polyglot or polyglot is more than one other language. So I'm not even that. I'm halfway there with Chinese. So yeah. Hi, Koi. I'm a, it's all right. Um, yeah. Also, someone has just said it's a good place to learn English and I love that. I get a lot of comments like that um, on my videos of people who are learning English and they like to watch my videos. So um, I'm glad that that can be um, useful for you guys. Um, I hope that you appreciate the subtitles on my videos because they take me so long to do. I'm actually... I'm currently procrastinating putting subtitles on my next video that's due on Tuesday. I'm I'm uh, leaving it a bit late. I'm procrastinating on it, so it's going to be a couple of days of work for me. But um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy that. Um, and next time you see my videos, you can think about those uh, subtitles and the work that goes into it. Um, oh, thank you so much for your super chat, uh, V. 
Oh, yeah, I, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Just showing um, an unbiased, non-political approach to this beautiful country and to just help people get over some of their biases and stereotypes about the country. So as I said, this is a, a place of love. Um, this is a, a safe space. So um, yeah, just uh, want to share the positivity here. And I hope that you guys um, like that. Um, so I'll take a couple more, um, a couple more, uh, questions and then I will go and have a nap. <laughs> it's really hot here in Australia. It's so hot. It's like 35 degrees. Um, let's see what it is. Um, the temperature is currently, oh, 37. It's 37. Crazy. Um, and there's going to be a storm in one hour. Crazy. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go and have a nap and put the air conditioner on. <laughs> um, someone says, when will I do another live stream? Um, I haven't scheduled one uh, just yet, but the next live stream location is probably going to be um, Beijing. Uh, and we're probably going to make that a two-part live stream because there's just so much to include about Beijing. So... Let me know what you think of this concept, but I was thinking if we do um, one part, which is ancient Beijing and show off, you know, the old facets of Beijing, all of those ancient elements, and then having a second live stream showing the more new modern things about Beijing because it's, I think, one live stream. Ooh, thunder. Um, can you hear that? Crazy. Um, I forgot what I was saying, but I'm sure it wasn't so interesting. Um yeah, so that's that. And uh, someone says, don't go away, Amy. I have to go away. Um, I'm going and getting Chinese food tonight, uh, like every other night. I don't know why it had to be special for me to bring it up now, but um, I'm going and getting some southern uh, Chinese food, um, which I'm really excited about. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably see some yummy food in my Instagram stories tonight. So if you do want to follow me on Instagram, you can do so at Blondie in China. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go now and um, I hope that you all have a lovely rest of your day. Sending love. Hope you liked the live stream. Don't forget to write me your feedback. Positive, negative, I want it all, I want to improve, and I want you guys to enjoy this series as much as possible. So, yeah, um, cool. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye.